I'm working on this piece over here, which is entitled Cat and Mouse. And I'm working on the mouse that's going to be down here the, that uh, the cat is playing with. With my Blackberry, I've got an image from Google on here of a mouse, so I know where to go on the character. And then I'll, I'll free draw it from there. And that should do it. You should be able to cut that out. And the better the cutting you've got, the less work you have to do afterwards in the hammering and such. You know, I can take it over to the cat and place it under and make sure that it's going to be under the paw. Now, I'm not doing anything that has to do with a cat going to kill a mouse. Obviously, cats do that. Mine is about play. It's all about fun. Now, there's, a, there's an ear missing, but I'm going to put another ear on there. By taking the ear that's on there now and draw around it again and come down here and put a little piece it's going to be a tab it's going to fit down into the ear. The repose is reposing it from the back out, pushing it out and giving you a full three-dimensional view of the mouse from the front. Bringing this all around so it curves around a little bit so it, it gives you a full three-dimensional look. It looks like a whole mouse. In doing chasing I'm coming in from the front end and I'm going back the other way. I'm pushing the spike along as I'm hammering and I'm going into the wood which is cypress it's a nice solid wood, but it has a little bit of a softness to it so that you can push into the wood. The ear is going to be going the other way because we want it to curve out. Using a ball ping head for a hammer, and you get these little things out of the way because it's kind of hard to go back and get them once you start doing the feet and everything. This is the right width for these legs. And you want to get this piece as much of a three-dimensional look because we're doing sculpture. And we're wanting things to have as much of a of the of the impression of being whole as possible. I want to create a little raise in the copper coming out this way rather than putting a hole in it from the front. Now I've got the ear in there and uh, I'm going to push down on the front this, this edge which is this part of the copper that's been pushed out which is part of that hole there that I've inserted the ear in. I'm just going to go ahead and and push that in a little bit and you've got now your ears and your mouse and it needs an eye. I make my own adhesive. It's uh, agar agar which is uh, seaweed. I boil it in water. It creates a solution I can spray out of the sprayer. I'm using a transparent rose purple that I'm going to sift on the front and the back. Spraying the surface, looking at where it's going. You don't want puddles but you want to get enough on there that it's wet all throughout and so the enamel will adhere to it and then sift. This is a transparent rose purple directly on copper so you're going to see the copper uh, underneath it and the copper is going to act as a reflective surface to illuminate the color you fired on there. The rose purple is very nice. It's a subtle purple color. It looks really good on the copper. I want to get in and get out as quickly as possible. I've got 1500 degrees of heat coming billowing out of here. So kind of lean in Get her down in here, pull the fork out, shut the door. On the first firing with transparencies, you want to fire enough to get the oxides to dissipate. But since I'm going to fire it two or three more times and add some different things to it, I don't want to overfire it. You can see the copper reflecting underneath it, and all is well. This is a titanium white enamel. It's got a little bit of other color in it, but it's it's enough to it's enough of the white to be able to do what I need to do. Now you sift that uh, yellow on and that will dry pretty fast. Now I'm using that agar agar which is an adhesive and once that adhesive dries and that glass is stuck on there I can remove it with a uh, wood skewer. And the opaque is a really nice color but whatever I remove is going to expose the under enamel which is the transparent. That will show up really nice in, in once it's fired. This is crushed glass but it's not it's been crushed to little tiny chunks rather than granular enamel. Those are fused down in. This is a great kiln. It's a Paragon. It's 45 amps at 240 volts. It cranks up some power. But we want to be careful about not, not over firing it so when it's ready. And if it is a little under fire that's okay but this is not. It's fired fully. I like the firing process in that a lot of things happen. The blue chunks that were on there have um, fused down in quite well. I like the combination of the transparent purple directly on copper with that orange on it, so that'll work. And that splash of blue, that's not a bad nose, huh?